Hey, 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 hey. Kia ora, kia ora. How's it going, everybody? Um, we'll just do some uh, local news for one. And, and this is something that I've been watching uh, before we go into the global news. Um, but this is something I've been watching very closely. And it's somewhat annoying a little bit. Because there's a post that's been going around saying that um, under the new pandemic plan, um, that they can forcibly hold us down and inject us. Now that is quite draconian, and I cannot for the likes of me imagine them doing that. Now remember, remember, I am an activist, <laughs> well was, was, past tense, um, but taking a, a more, you know, a real, when, when we talk about being critical thinkers, we have to think critically, and I think a lot of our Freedom fighters just aren't thinking critically anymore. My sound seems to be peaking a bit. Check one, two, check one, two. Um, yeah, so our people have lost the ability to actually think critically. Uno momento. Uno momento. Um, so, yeah, and so I read the pandemic plan, and it's 127 pages. But what really sticks out for me is, and what people have been pointing out, is what it says under the Health Act 1956, Section 71H. And if we take a moment to actually read it, the, and this is the part that's actually concerning for a lot of people. Let me scroll down here. 70, we find 70, Special Powers of Medical Officer of Health. We find one, and it reads, Special Powers of Medical Officer of Health. For the purpose of preventing the outbreak or spread of any infectious disease, the Medical Officer of Health may from time to time, if authorised to do so by the, Minister of, uh, by the Minister or in a state of emergency has been declared under the Civil Defence Emergency Management Act 2002 or while an epidemic notice is in force by notice, 1H, let me go down to H, require people to remain in the health district or the place in which they are isolated or quarantined until they have medically been have been medically examined which i'm assuming would be the shing shove it up your nose uh medically examined and found to be free from infectious disease and and here's the crux of it and until they have undergone such preventative treatment as he may in any such case prescribe. Now, what does that mean? Well, here's how I read it. It means that unless I take the vaccine, whatever it is, then I can't go anywhere. It doesn't say there that they can hold me down. <laughs> and it doesn't say that. And if that's the case, you know, if, if they want to hold you down, then... But it doesn't say that. My, my point is that it doesn't say that. If they did want to hold you down in jail, then there's ways to, to, to fight that, because that's insane. And I'm sure even ordinary New Zealanders will find that insane, that to hold people down. And I put this I put this up on people who... Is, you know, there are people who... Um, you know, medical staff should be... It should be mandatory and all that sort of stuff. Again, but that's not what it says. This is not what it's saying. What it's saying is that if you are infected and you don't take the jab, or, uh, let me read it again, requires people to remain in the health district or in the place in which they are isolated or quarantined until they have been medically examined, zik, 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 medically examined and found to be free from infectious disease. So you can be found to be free from the infectious disease and, and it says, and, look at this over here, it says, and, until they have undergone such preventative treatment as he may in any such case prescribe, he being the health minister. Surely, do you not find that insane? Let me know down in the comments. That's got to be insane, right? That Even if you're... Now, uh, 
remember I, I was an activist and coming from somebody who look at all these conspiracy theories and all that sort of stuff. This is not a conspiracy theory. This is in plain black and white that actually tells us, whether you're an activist or not, that that is insane, yeah? Tell me what, what you think. Down in the comments. That has got to be insane. That has got to be wrong, surely. First in the world. And I've heard, and this is what really annoys me, and to, some people may say, yeah, but, you know, really that means that they can hold us down if they want to. Well, to me it doesn't say that. And if they do do that, then there are ways, you know, that people are going to know. People are going to know. You imagine, you imagine how many people, um, you know, if we use our thinking cap, you know, if you have 10,000 people that um, say no, that's 10, th in the case that my friends are think, suggesting, that's 10,000 people they have to hold down. You imagine 10,000 people screaming and making a noise? about what's going on, I don't think it will be. This is too draconian, it's almost Nazi-like, you know? That's what they did back in Nazi Germany during um, World War Two. So, just think about it, they did that then. Uh, we're, we're, not, we're not Germans, <laughs> you know? Well, nothing against Germans, don't get me wrong. But we are New Zealand. We're very different people. And this is a different time. And I can't see that they would do that to us. And it doesn't even say that that's what they'll do. Even though some want to read into it and say, well, there's a bit of room there for them to do it. I don't know. You let me know. Anyway. And for those of you who don't know, look, there's the pandemic plan. It's all there, 100 or 219 pages of it, sorry. Um, and that's out there. I'll, I'll leave it in the link uh, if you want to read that actual plan. The New Zealand Pandemic Flamer Framework for Action Interim Update July 2024. And this is before the release. Well, um, the Commission of Inquiry uh, into COVID-19, I think it was just released. That's a bit of a... Hmm. I don't know, the scope of inquiry uh, was a bit, I don't know, questionable. But anyway, so that's the pandemic. Anyway, now into world news. Wow, what's going on around the world? Well, as I said yesterday, is this, let's go back and have a look what's happening in the, over the Middle East at the moment. What is the time in the Middle East? It's... Um, Hey Google, what is the time in Israel? It is currently 1.46 a.m. NZST. As Israel Standard Time, IST, is 10 hours behind NZST. The current time in Israel is 3.46 p.m. IST on Tuesday, August... 3.46 p.m. in Israel at the moment. And it's pretty quiet over the airwaves. We can see it looks like a couple of um, typhoons. Yep, United K, United Kingdom, um, uh, through the Mediterranean. It's a couple of Euro fighters. Here we go. There we go. Let's uh, change this to map default. See whether they're just patrolling. So they're only 11,000 feet, 460 knots. So they're not going very fast in terms of. Um, and then we have a KC2. This is a, probably a sub hunter patrolling the area as well. But all is quiet. All is pretty quiet in terms of military aircraft. What do we got down here in uh, Saudi Arabia? Malaysian Air Force. We got a. Uh, what do I keep missing this? Oh, Airbus A400, so another carrier. And another A400. So they're even shipping stuff into Saudi Arabia. Malaysians. So it's not much activity, it's pretty quiet. It's pretty quiet on the home front at the moment. Nothing going on, nothing to see here. So that's... Uh, uh, but if we have a look, if we turn our filters off, 
You can see that it is quite busy. <laughs> that, that's how busy it is over the Middle East, right? So it's quite busy. There's a lot of aircraft, even over Iran. You know, you've got Witsusun. That's uh, from Dubai to Moscow. And it's flying right over Iran. Uh, where's this thing going? Dubai to Washington. Really? Washington where? Is there another Washington somewhere else around the world? You're going the wrong way if you're going to Washington, bro. <laughs> but as you can see, it is very busy. Okay? It is very busy. So nothing much going on at the moment. There is supposed to be a no-fly zone, but as you can see, it's busy. Right? Even across here. Look at all these. It's very busy. Um, not much happening over Syria. I don't know why that is. <laughs> There's a bit happening over in Baghdad, in Iraq. Lebanon is pretty quiet. Although we've had a, um, what's this one? The Royal Jordanian Airlines. Oh, those are on the ground. Yeah, Embrasia. Oh no, that's uh, 35,000 feet. But anyway. Um, as you can see, it is very busy. But let's read some of the news. Um, this I found really interesting. Let's go back here first. Uh, not that one. The Russians. What's up in Russia? Up to 180,000 uh, Russians flee the Ukrainians' continued offensive. So for those of you who don't know, there was 180,000 people, as I was hearing about the other day, or yesterday, and and apparently uh, Putin has left the house. Putin has left the house. He's left the Kremlin. He's flown out from the Kremlin. Don't know where he's gone, but he's up to something. But as many as... Now, this is just what Politico is saying, right? It's as many as 180,000 Russian civilians are being evacuated from the regions near the border with Ukraine and the Kremlin. Scrambles to deal with the Ukrainians' continued cross-border incursion. Alexei Smirnov, the acting governor for the Kurdish region, told Russia leader Vladimir Putin on Monday that more than 120,000 people have left the region, while another 60,000 are waiting to be evacuated. He told clearly unmused Putin that Ukraine holds 28 towns and villages in the Kursk region, controlling an area 12 kilometers deep and 40 kilometers wide. Reports from Russia Military bloggers on Monday indicate that Ukrainian troops have been seen much further inside the Russian territory. Now, is that true? I don't know. I don't know. Um, I really don't know. But, hey, you know, things are starting to heat up there as well. And they did show, I did see a video, I didn't find it now, but I did see a video of um, the equivalent of... Uh, America's Air Force One, you know, the Kremlin's, uh, Vladimir Putin's um, Air Force One, leaving the Kremlin the other day. But it could have been for any reason. It could have been he was going for a coffee, maybe. But also, for those of you who are watching or who were watching the interview uh, between Elon Musk and Donald Trump uh, yesterday, yesterday or day before yesterday, um... I watched some of it, but then something happened, and it was taken down. It was the major interruption. And so a little bit of fishing, and as I suspected, there was apparently a cyber hack. Now, a lot of people are believing... No, actually, no, we'll carry on with this. I'll read this first. Now, I'm not a big fan. Uh, uh, for those of you who know me, I was a big fan of Elon Musk, and I was a big fan of Trump. Not so much anymore. Not so much anymore. And there's a reason for that, which I'm not going to get into at the moment. Um, but that's besides the point. Elon Musk's live-streamed interview with former US President Donald Trump on X was taken offline in the early hours of Tuesday morning after an outage Musk blamed on a massive cyber attack. 
There appears to be a massive DDoS uh, attack on X. DDoS's uh, denial of uh, service attack, where a, a server can be overwhelmed with a whole lot of stuff and it just crashes. Uh, said in a post on his social media network, referring to a distributed denial of oh, there he is, distributed denial of service net, uh, attack, in which massive amounts of internet traffic. Oh, Maybe I should have just read it. <laughs> are directed at websites and services, causing them to go offline. The interview proceeded around 40 minutes later with a smaller number of listeners with Musk saying the unedited audio would be posted after it concluded. Now, this has been happening quite a lot lately. Eh? There's been uh, major attacks. And, and I think this is another way that Iran... And Iran seems to be backing down a little bit now. In, in their in their um, uh, threats on uh, a frontal attack or very outward attack on on Israel, um, but what people don't realise as well is Iran have some of the best hackers in the world as well, because they are the Russians and the Chinese and they were, but a lot of attacks actually come out of Iran. And here's another article. Uh, authorities of the Islamic Republic are considering potential cyber attacks against Israel as they consider their response to Ismail uh, Haniyeh's assassination in Tehran. Iran's delayed reaction to the 31st, July 31st incident has fueled widespread speculation and concern in the region. Pro-government media and supporters claim the delay is part of the psychological warfare strategy against Israel, while a Iran wire sources have suggested otherwise. I, I think it is. It's all propaganda, you know. It's all psychological propaganda to scare the the people in in, in the um, region and in the town and the whole region really to throw it out of whack, you know. Two sources, including a diplomat and a former intelligence security official, told Iran Wire that Iranian authorities continue to explore options, but have yet to finalise a plan. Well. Uh, in terms of their hybrid, uh, cyber attacks, they're pretty go, pretty much going ahead with that. We had another outage yesterday uh, with EVPOS that were out all day, almost all day. Uh, these these are continued attacks. People, they call them, you know, you'll hear them say that they're just down for maintenance, and but they're not, bro. And I know why they're saying it is because they're scared of, when they tell us that it was a cyber attack that uh, people are going to rush in and go and draw out all their money. Well, number one, there won't be any money to draw out because there's none in the bank. There's <laughs> <You know? laughs> nothing there. It's all on the computer. You go draw your money out. That's why they tell you if you have a term investment, you've got to give them 6,500 days notice so they can go and get your money. <laughs> it's ridiculous. Um... The source, the sources emphasise that the lack of response is not psychological warfare, but, but a delay in determining the most effective form of response. While Iran have to really think about what they're doing, because they will get wiped out. Israel will wipe them out, you know, and they can't afford that. They really can't afford it. Um, in fact, the nerve Trump was there, he would, you know, he would have made them broke. They'd have got enough money. Uh, what was the name? Uh, Biden topped them up a little bit, gave them a bit of a top up, and uh, now they're running out of money. And if they uh, decide to go ahead with this, um, then they'll definitely get broke. They'll be broke as bro. Uh, 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 Iran's supreme leader Ali Khamenei and other top authorities have attributed the assassination to Israel and promised harsh revenge. Kohmeni said that Israel has paved the way for severe consequences and it is the Islamic Republic's duty to seek revenge for Hania's death on Iranian, uh, Iranian soil. According to Iran Weil, sources, a large-scale military attack resulting in civilian casualties is not a priority for Iran. Now, you know, Iran may try to attack... Um, may try to attack... Uh, Israel um, by hacking them, but you know uh, Israel's got s some of the best defenses in the world. 
Um, whether they'd be successful or not is, is another thing. But that is an option, and it certainly is an option. And I, I would have thought that they would have considered that, and I'm sure they have been considering that from the very beginning. Um, one, overwhelm the Iron Dome forces, uh, Iron, overwhelm the Iron Dome defence uh, with their 200 odd thousand rockets that they have. Uh, and with the help of his, Hezbollah, Hezbollah as well, but also using uh, cyber attacks to take down some of their defences. Uh, FBI investigating efforts to infiltrate presidential campaigns, again, possibly by Iran. Iran has been, you know, it's not China, it's not, you know, we can say we can blame Iran, but Iran's quite formidable when it comes to cyber attacks, trust me. They have some of the best hackers in the world. <laughs> Uh, but FBI investigating efforts to infiltrate presidential campaigns possibly by Iran. The Bureau has repeatedly warned about foreign countries meddling in the upcoming election, including using artificial intelligence to spread misinformation, which happens a lot, you know, which happens a lot. And, and, I, and I see it in amongst our own um, uh, movements, the freedom movements. There's people sharing all the stuff that's been created by AI and we seem to have lost the ability to think critically anymore, you know, we just, because it, it's what we want to hear, it's what we want to see, and so we share it. And this is another way that hackers find their ways into our systems, or into your systems. The FBI said on Monday that it was investigating the apparent hacking of the Trump campaign, uh, and what a senior law enforcement official also said was an effort to gain access to the accounts of top Democrats in a cyber attack possibly originating from Iran. In a brief statement, an FBI spokeswoman confirmed that the Bureau was investigating a campaign cyber intrusion days after former President Donald Trump, uh, J. Trump, said Iran had targeted his campaign. The Bureau did not specifically name Iran or Mr. Trump, nor did the Bureau address the extent of the breach or the possibility that it encompassed other campaigns or political figures. Well, number one, we don't just don't trust the FBI anymore. Yeah? We don't just, we just don't trust the FBI anymore. Um, they could have been part of it. Actually, that's what I'm saying. They're probably all part of it. They probably gave the uh, FBI the keys. <laughs> Did I say that right? The FBI probably gave around the keys. Yeah. But investigators are looking at into are also looking into an attempt to infiltrate accounts associated with the Democrats' presidential campaign. According to the law enforcement official with knowledge of the situation, the timing of the attempt was unclear, though the official added that there was no indication that the effort had succeeded. Whatever. <laughs> Whatever. You know. Even if it didn't, you know, hackers are, and this is what's been happening over here as well, right? Hackers, they keep testing systems, keep testing systems, taking down systems. What can they take out? I'm telling you, our infrastructure, when this all goes down, our infrastructure is next. That's what they're after. They're after to take out our power grid and take out our water. I'm telling you, that's what's going to happen. Every time you hear of, of uh, outages, Internet outages, FPOS outages, bank outages, banks down for for maintenance all on one day. You know, something's going on. And I can guarantee it's probably the Iranians or one of its proxies, but more so the Iranians. Uh, on Friday, Microsoft said a hacking group inf affiliated with Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps uh, had infiltrated the account of a former top aide to an unnamed presidential campaign. Mr. Trump's longtime advisor, Roger J. Stone, said Microsoft contacted him a few months ago saying that his Hotmail email account had been compromised and that it, that it believed the culprit to be Iran. He said in a phone interview on Monday evening. So there we go again. Right? It's got to be Iran, bro. And uh, this article uh, from Iranian uh, paper, I don't know who they are, US offers $10 million reward for information on Iranian hackers. 
Yeah, true. That's it. The US has offered a $10 million award for information on six identified Iranian government hackers responsible for a series of cyber attacks on US water utilities last fall. Yeah, there we go. Water fertility. U.S. water utilities last fall. Um, that's to entice anyone in, in the hacking community, really. Uh, whether the um, Iranians or not, I don't know. But you know, hackers love a bit of money. The State Department, the State Department statement said that it's looking for information leading to the identification or location of the suspects. The six Iranian officials named in the advisory are linked to Iran's Islamic Revolutionary Guard Corps and its Cyber Electronic Command. <clears throat> they are accused of compromising industrial control systems, specifically targeting the Vision series of programmable logic controllers. PLCs manufactured by Iran-based Unitronics. These PLCs are widely used in various industries, including water and waterware, uh, wastewater, wastewater, energy, food, and beverage, and manufacturing and healthcare. The men identified include uh, Hamid Pesar Lasria Lasgrian Grian. Uh, head of the IRGC's Cyber Electronic Command and Commander in the IRGC, uh, Kyod's Force. So, you know, what, what I guess we want to do is check out in this statement here, uh, the PLCs uh, manufactured by, we have to find out if our logic boards or logic controllers are manufactured by Iran. I, I don't think we do any work with them, but no, you know, uh, it doesn't have to be. They'll find a way into it if they need to. Uh, but this is something we need to look out for. So what I've been saying all along, we really got to watch out when we have these. Every time we get these these attacks, every time we get these outages, every time we get this, it's just another step where hackers are taking to test the ground again, see how far they can get, see what more the damage they can do, and to prepare their way for a major attack. There will be one major attack, I'm telling you. And I guess that is the news. Uh, and this one as well, Biden, Iran could hold back on attack if Gaza deal is reached. Mm. Can they? Iran is expected to skip retaliatory strike on Israel if a Gaza ceasefire deal is reached. U.S. Presidential, uh, U.S. President Joe Biden told reporters in New Orleans on Tuesday, stressing that's my expectation. Well, number one, uh, did Biden actually say that? Is that Biden? <laughs> it's been a whole lot of stories going around lately, but you know, you got to wonder. You really got to wonder. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've read all of that. Okay. And uh, that's, that's the news report today. We just have one final look at what's going on over. So you can see that it's very busy. You know, if, if anything was going to happen, it wouldn't be that busy, especially over Iran, you know. Uh, but military-wise, uh, everyone seems to have gone to bed. Doesn't seem to be anything. The typhoons have landed in Cyprus. So there's a whole lot of uh, warships within the Mediterranean Sea here. Off the coast of uh, Greece, uh, and I believe uh, obviously there's some in the Gulf as well, Gulf of Oman inside the Persian Gulf, and uh, yeah, but very little activity at the moment, and that's all we have for you today. Anyway, hey, take care. Uh, one, one thing you need to really be aware of is God has control of all of this, yeah? God has control of all of this. Nothing to fear. Nothing to fear here. My whole reasoning for putting, to talk about all of this is not not to draw fear in, and, and even if it does take off, even if something does happen, I'm not afraid. I'm not afraid because of Jesus Christ in my life. Jesus Christ in my life is not afraid. It's not be afraid. 
everything is okay. Everything is okay. There's nothing be wrong with it. Eh? Um, yeah. Take care, everybody. God bless. Love you all. See you. Mm-hmm.